So what is a confluent canal? Well, you must understand that when two canals merge at a point, then that canal is called a confluent canal. Wayne had come out with his classification for root canal anatomy, and he clearly stated that uh, type 2 and type 3 canals, as you can see in the picture, they are canals which merge and exit as a single canal. So these are confluent canals, and they are quite common in, in posterior teeth, maxillary mandibular posterior teeth, even anterior teeth, you have lower incisors, which can be uh, two canal, confluent canals. Okay, so why is this very important to us? One of the major reasons at doing this is to bring in the awareness of file separation in confluent canals. I've seen quite a number of cases where um, there is a file separation and uh, they need me to retrieve the file. So this video should be an eye opener to explain why it happens and how you can overcome it. There are numerous studies which have been done to study canal anatomies and uh, this is one study published in the Dental Research Journal, Lower Molar. You can clearly see the mesial, the mesial root which has two canals. You can see majority of the time they have two individual canals but there is a high number about close to 40% of the time they are confluent. Okay, so let's look at this picture and try to understand better. So you can clearly see this is an extracted tooth and uh, the tooth has a confluent uh, canal. The mesial root has confluent canals. So let's track the mesial lingual canal or first let's track the mesial buccal canal. Okay, so you can clearly see it takes multiple curvatures. Okay, and what about the mesial lingual canal? The mesial lingual canal is a lot better. It's, I wouldn't say straight, but very limited number of, uh, very limited curves it's been taken there. So if you're going to shape the mesiobuccal canal to the apex, what exactly happens is your file takes multiple curvatures. When you're shaping in the initial days, if you don't care for, there is a possibility that you could cause file separation due to cyclic fatigue. So what is that uh, you should know? Well, the recommended plan to shape is to first shape the easier canal, that is the mesiolingual canal to the apex. Then use your GP in the mesiolingual canal, use your file, try to create an indentation. And then in that indentation, in that indentation, you can actually check and you can find out where exactly this canal is merging. And once you know where this canal is merging, okay, so it makes it very easy for you to plan and take your next step. The same concept applies for all other teeth as well. Now, how do we verify canal confluence? Sometimes we are not very sure if there's a canal confluence and if there is, okay, this is how you do it. Place your file in the mesiolingual canal all the way to the apex that you determine the apex locator. Then leave the file there. Now place your file in the mesio buccal canal. Connect your apex locator. You will find that when the file merges or the, the file touches the other file that at the point where it's merging, your apex locator will indicate that the file is at the apex. This is a very classic sign, or it's a very easy way to determine with an electronic apex locator. Now, once you have verified, I've told you what to do. You need to shape the mesiolingual canal first. After you shape the mesiolingual canal, now place your GP in the mesiolingual canal, use your K file, place it in the mesiobuccal canal. Once you go into the mesiobuccal canal, your GP will have an indentation made by this file. So once you remove the GP, you can clearly see it and you will know exactly where the meeting point is or the merging point is. And this will really help you with the obturation. And also you can shape or obturate only until this point. Now, when you're doing your irrigation protocol, it's quite common for us to see this uh, occurrence where you irrigate one canal and you find that the irrigant is in the other canal. Sometimes you aspirate the irrigant from one canal, you find that the irrigant is aspirated from the other canal as well. It's a clear sign that the canal is confluent. Now, we have seen how to shape it. Let's see how to obturate such canals. Just one simple tip. Okay, so what do I do? In this case, I'm going to obturate the canal using a single cone technique with biceramic sealer.
So I pump my bioceramic sealer in the mesiolingual canal and the sealer also can be seen coming out of the mesiobuccal canal. Now I take my single cone, place it in my mesiolingual canal all the way to the apex, shear it off and then I will obturate the mesiobuccal only until the merging point. I've already determined with the apex locator, I know where it merges, so you know I'm just going to stick to that point. If you don't want to use a single cone, you can also inject GP until that area, pack and then you know backflow and pack again. This is one of the easiest ways to obturate your confluent canals. This is a classic sign of uh, example of a confluent premolar tooth with confluent canals, I'm sorry. So it's a retreatment case. The post-op clearly shows the confluence in the canal at the apical third. This is the molar. Patient came in with a necrotic pulp and a chronic abscess and a multi visit root canal treatment was done. That is a follow-up. This tooth also had a confluent mesial canal. So managing confluent canals are easy if you take the steps that I've just mentioned. Anyway, thank you so much. And uh, if you like my video, please like it. And if you would like to hear more, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you again.